Hello world! In today's video, I have used an RGB LED with MSP430 microcontroller to get different colors. And this is an application of pulse width modulation. I have explained the theory of pulse width modulation in MSP430 in a previous video, so do check that out first. Now I have kept a paper box on my LED as the light was a little too bright and disturbing for my eyes. So you can also solder the circuit and put it in a plastic case to get a fancy little lamp. And uh, over here you can see that we're getting some beautiful hues transitioning quite smoothly. So now let's look at the details for implementation of this project. Alright, so today's topic of discussion is MSP430 with RGB LED and we are going to use a pulse width modulation to basically light up our LED. So now let's quickly have a look at the software flowchart. So first of all, we'll be starting and we'll be stopping the watchdog timer. Then we'll be setting three pins for output mode, that is out mode 7. And these three pins will provide us with PWM signal and each of them are connected to red, green and blue um, pins of the RGB LED. Then we also enable the timer interrupt which will cause an interrupt after every 10 milliseconds. Then we start both the timers that is zero, timer A0 and timer A1 as we have used both of these for this project. Then we enable the low power mode and interrupts. After every 10 milliseconds timer ISR is called and basically at the end of 50 milliseconds it calls a method which is called as update color. As the name itself says, this method helps us in changing the color after every 50 milliseconds interval. So now let's understand in depth what are we trying to accomplish through this method. So there's something called as color wheel which consists of three primary colors that is red, green and blue. And we mix these in varying proportions to get different hues. For example, mixing red and blue gives us magenta. On mixing blue and green, we get cyan. On mixing green and red, we get yellow and other shades. And I have no idea about the names of these, but you get the gist of it. You get all these fancy colors. All right, so there are a few points that I'd like to highlight about this method. First being the brightness of the color, that is the saturation, is varied by changing the duty cycle or the T on time. That is the more the value of the duty cycle, the more brighter that color would appear. And the lesser the value of duty cycle, the dimmer that color would appear. So you can increment or decrement the duty cycle by a particular value and I have chosen it to be 50 in case of our code. You can use a lower value and you can get more number of hues or colors. Lower the value, less abrupt would be the change in color. However, I think 50 suffices. Next, in order to see a smooth transition and not a rapid change which is too hard for your eyes to detect, we use timer interrupt and as we've seen collectively it gives us a delay of 50 milliseconds before the next color change. Then the PWM frequency has to be higher than the eye response time, which is at around 50 to 90 hertz. So we have to keep the PWM frequency higher than that. Otherwise, you will see the LED blinking, which is something which we don't really want. That's why uh, we've selected the PWM frequency as 1 kilohertz. That means the clock frequency is at 1 megahertz. And the CCR register value for both the timers is kept at 1000 to accomplish, uh, to basically get this value of 1 kilohertz. All right, so now let's see the logic that we've used for mixing the colors. Um, I have basically mixed two colors at a time and I've kept the third one off. And this is the logic that I have used. There is no hard and fast rule as to you have to use this logic only. But the idea was to simply implement PWM and get fancy colors. So you can see that the red colors duty cycle is kept high at 750 thus there is more proportion of red and less of blue and gradually red is decreased and blue is increased by changing the duty cycle between 0 and 750 and as discussed previously I'm changing the duty cycle by a factor of 50. Now you can use a smaller number and you can get more number of hues which I have already said. Anyway next uh, we have the starting value as 750, 0 and 0 and the final values for red as 0, blue as 750 and uh, green is obviously 0. So now what we are going to do is we are going to decrease the amount of blue that we've used and increase the amount of green. So we are going to mix blue and green and we are going to keep red as constant at 0. So with that blue is decreased, green is increased. Lastly we mix green and red and here we are going to 
decrease the amount of green and then we are going to increase the amount of red. So red's proportion is increased and then again we switch to red and blue combination and this cycle keeps on repeating. So now you can see that there are total of 15 intensity values that you get. Thus the update method consists of code which mixes red and blue for 15 times in varying proportion. The next 15 times blue and green and then finally green and red. And the code for this is as usual available on my blog. Check the description link in there and yeah, you will check the description to find the link. <laughs> All right. Now let's have a quick look at the circuit or the hardware connections. So first up we have MSP430 and VCC is connected to 3.3 volts and ground is obviously connected to ground. Next we have RGB LED and the one which we have used is common cathode. Now the identification of this can be done in a certain way like if it is common cathode or common anode and I've made a video for that and I'll be uploading it soon. But this one is common cathode thus the longest pin that is cathode is connected to ground. And the pin corresponding to red is connected to 220 ohms current limiting resistor and the other end of this resistor is connected to P2.1 pin. Similarly, the green pin is connected to P1.6, blue is connected to P2.5. Now these pins of microcontrollers are not selected randomly as I had already discussed in the previous video. So these are like timer specific pins, they are assigned for this particular purpose. and. Uh, these are the corresponding registers, timer registers, which are used for these three colors. So check the previous video if you're not aware about these registers. And TA0 and TA1 CCR0 registers have the value of 1000, as I had already said, so that they can provide a PWM frequency of 1 kilohertz. So that is all about this project. Now, next up, we will see timer in capture mode. And we'll also have a video on identification of RGB LED, that, it, uh, that is if it is common cathode or common anode. So that's it for today. Like and share the video if you found it useful. Subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. And bye world.